everybody and welcome to another video here today. We are back with yet another ranking video here on the channel. You guys love the Gravedigger and Avenger rankings. So I figured I will give you guys what you've been asking for today. We are ranking Max D bodies. I was going to do this one second, but I figured I'd break up the Gravedigger and the Max Ds with the Avenger one because it was a really cool one to do. But today we have one of the most legendary monster trucks of all time. The Max D or Maximum Destruction. We're doing all of them. If it was a Max D or Maximum Destruction identity, we are including it in this ranking today. There are not as many as we have with Gravedigger or Avenger, but I will say there are some spectacular ones, and I don't really think there's any that are bad. But without further ado, let's get right into the ranking. So we've got 17 Max D bodies to go over today. We're ranking them from worst to best. This is every body that ran as Maximum Destruction or Max D. It's had an illustrious history, one of the most legendary trucks of all time, and honestly, every single body on this list is good, but we have to start with the worst, and that one is the Nitro Truck. The Superstar Challenge body for Team Nitro from the 2023 Superstar Challenge. I don't know. Something about it just didn't sit right with me. They paid homage to the spiked Max D, but didn't put spikes on it. And I also didn't like the black and white random streaks that they put. I mean, what's with the, the white streaks on the fenders? I mean, like that and on the front and the back. It just, it seemed like a kid created this and just threw it out there. It's not bad. It's not ugly. It's just compared to the rest of Max D's, it's far and away the worst, and it's not even close. Going to number 16 on this list, this is the first Maximum Destruction. This was the debut of Maximum Destruction. After Goldberg, after Team Mens, this is the first time that this truck ever ran. And this truck with this specific paint job only lasted for a year or so with the flames being this way, the Maximum Destruction logo being this way. It looked really cool. The flames were neat, but it changed a lot when it got upgraded a little bit in a year or so, which we will see a little bit more later on. It's not bad, but again, it's got to be somewhere, and it's not better than the remaining 15 on this list. At number 15, this is Max D Fire. Now, we were just talking about the Superstar Challenge body last year with Team Nitro two spots ago. Now we go to the first ever All-Star Challenge year. This body was cool. It's not bad. It's not ugly. But I mentioned it in the Gravedigger video. The Fire Trucks genuinely would have looked so much better if instead of red being the pr the primary color, they used black. I mean, look at Megalodon Fire. Megalodon Fire is the same thing that all the fire trucks should have been. I mean, Gravedigger Fire was cool, Max D Fire was cool, but imagine if these trucks had black as the primary color with the rest of this, with the face sticking out of it in the red. It would have been in the top 10, if not even the number one spot. But something about it, too much red going on. It's got to be at number 15. Number 14 is actually one that debuted right here this year in 2024 in San Antonio, Texas. This is the split design with the maximum destruction on one side and the 20th anniversary on the other. Not a bad design. I like it. I love the idea and the concept the most. Because if it weren't for the idea of it, this probably would be a couple spots lower on this list. But I just feel like it wasn't executed it couldn't have been executed any better. I mean, it was quite simply executed the best it could. I just don't love the look of it. Something about these two bodies together just wasn't the coolest thing out there. But it was about the idea. It was about the thought of merging the original Maximum Destruction and modern day Maximum Destruction. And it was a great way to send off Tom Mensa's final year. At number 13, we have the more modern day Spiked Max D look. Now, we didn't get to see a ton of this truck because Tom Mentz ran a bunch of different designs from 2020 through 2024, but this truck was pretty much the standard after COVID. This was one, it was a little bit different. This was different from the mid two th the mid 2010s bodies, which we will get to a little bit later. But 
for right now you can kind of see this body was different because it was curved a little bit more and they also took out the things that overhung kind of pretty much the fenders i mean there are fenders on it already but there were previously fenders on it that stuck out from the already existing fenders which is what made them different I didn't like it. It made it look a little bit softer of a truck. Wasn't my favorite, but it's still pretty cool. Gets number 13. At number 12, we have Morgan Kane's Special Gold Max D. This is the one that he ran throughout the regular season and at the World Finals in 2015. I like it a lot. This is a really, really special looking Max D. And it was also at a time where Monster Jam had finally started integrating different bodies. It was one of the first that we saw from the main monster truck identities gravedigger and max d both that a driver that wasn't the main driver of the truck got a different design to showcase them in a different way so that people know oh this isn't tom mentz this is a different driver and i like what they did with it because it paid homage to the original maximum destruction with the with the specific futuristic suv look but not having the spikes on there made it look a little bit less mean, made it look a little bit less cool. It's still super cool, and I love what they did with it, but it's not the greatest of all time just simply because it didn't have a ton going on. It was very nice, I like it a lot, and I wish they brought it back, but it's not as cool as the other ones we're going to see in a minute. Getting to number 11 now, this is the 20th anniversary Max D body. Now, this one is one that, I'm very conflicted about because when I first saw this truck unveiled, I loved it. I was there for the unveiling and it was a beautiful truck. Our jaws dropped looking at it. But then the more you look at it, the closer you look at it, you realize how really little effort they put into this truck. I mean, it's quite literally just a, a Max D body that was painted black with a giant flame thrown onto it yeah the logo is pretty cool but i mean there's nothing else to it it's simply just fire on a truck and for the 20th anniversary of max d we've seen what max d can look like in the past this doesn't pay tribute to max d much and it certainly doesn't have a lot of thought that went into it it's a cool looking design which is why it's still at number 11 but i mean man this truck easily could have been much better if they did something else with it so we get to the top 10, and in this spot at number 10, this is the 10th anniversary body that was ran throughout the 2013 regular season. Now, this picture is not that body, but it's pretty much the same, because the only pictures I could find of it were really blurry. You couldn't see what I mean. So the only difference with this body and that one is that that one had the X on the side as a big X representing the decade of destruction. But aside from that, it's quite literally the same exact truck. So that's why I wanted to use this as a reference because there's no difference between the two. So this is essentially acting as that 10th anniversary truck. Really cool. This is the first time we saw a Max D truck in this design. I mean, it completely changed. You have to remember, before this truck existed, all we had was Maximum Destruction, Goldberg, and Team Mets. So this quite literally took the Max D and threw it into a blender. I mean, this thing is so different, so abstract, and it's so cool. I love it. It has to start off the top 10. Number nine, we get into one of the brothers Max D designs. You might remember when Colton Eichelberger and Jared Eichelberger ran in Monster Jam together. They both had their own special designs on their arena tours. This one was Jared Eichelberger's, but it's not the one he ran throughout the season. This is the special body design that only ran one time. This was at the World Finals in 2016 during the Young Gun shootout. It was such a cool thing that no one was expecting because he had been running the yellow all season, but they took the yellow, combined it with a little orange, with the, the classic orange from Max D, and it was cool because in different lighting it would look orange, and in other lighting it would look yellow. You can even see it in this picture and it was nice, it was a really cool design, and I miss those old school designs when all the different drivers had their own different bodies. It just made them feel even cooler, but it didn't last very long, but it was still a cool one. Now at number eight, we go to the other brother. This is Colton Eichelberger's Golden Maxi that he ran throughout the regular season and at the World Finals in 2016. And this one had so much character to it. This took the Morgan Kane cool looking Gold Maxi and added flavor to it, added seasoning to it. I mean, this thing is 
actually a beautiful truck. Anytime you saw this thing, you just you were you couldn't stop. You, you couldn't help but stop and look at it. Everything about it was nice. The Max D being in gold, the face being in gold, the spikes being chrome added to it even more. Because if those spikes were gold, it might not have looked as cool. But the chrome accented the gold very, very well. The bead locks, even the BKT stickers were gold. I mean, they did this truck so, so well. And it has to be number eight. However, at number seven, placing higher is Jared Eichelberger's regular season yellow truck. And the reason for that is everybody knows a gold truck is going to look cool. It can't not. I mean, it's gold. It has to look great. But a yellow truck? How many times can you say, oh, let's take a truck that normally has no yellow in it at all and make it yellow? Imagine a yellow grave digger. It would look disgusting. This truck looked awesome. It took a color in yellow that is so controversial, doesn't look good on everything, and it somehow popped because they added the black accents in there. It wasn't just yellow. Had a little bumblebee effect to it, and I love it even more than the orange and yellow that Jared had at the World Finals. I wish they just kept this because this looked so much better in my opinion, and I like it more than Colton's. It's just, it was just so cool. Now at number six, this is maximum destruction we saw the original maximum destruction at number 16 but 10 spots higher this is the maximum destruction that ran from the second year through 2012 and has made its brief returns in 2024 and in other encore events since you could see the difference if you paid attention to the first maximum destruction with the flames. That's the biggest difference here. The flames on the original Maximum Destruction look totally different than this. And the logo is different too. The outer silver around the Maximum Destruction name is a little bit darker here on this particular truck. And it just it just looks so much better. And it looks so much cleaner. And the fact that it's at number 6. I mean, you have to keep in mind... This is a list with some cool, special designs, world finals designs, but this is at number six, and it's a true testament to how perfect this truck was. They could not have done this any better the first time if they tried. For the time that Monster Jam was in, this was already a spectacle. It was already well ahead of its time. I mean, it was literally called a futuristic SUV, and here it is in all of its glory at the number six spot. At number five, we have the Chrome Max-D that ran during the World Finals in the Decade of Destruction year, the 10th anniversary Max-D. This picture doesn't do it justice. If you were there and saw this body, you would have known how cool it looked, and there's also pictures of this body on a in a special display somewhere in a very brightly lit room and it showcased the chrome and how truly bright the chrome is. I love the Gravedigger chrome from 2007. This chrome is even brighter somehow. I don't know how you can do that, but they somehow did it. This body was so shiny and I wish the picture showed it better, but with how cool I know this body is, it has to be at the number five spot. He won a freestyle championship in it too, and it only ran for really two events. This is also the same one that he did the front flip attempt in in Foxborough. So you can kind of give yourself a bit of a you know a memory uh, relapse there to think back to that time because it was so cool. It really stood out, and I loved it. It's got to be number five. Now at number four, we have the second edition of Max D. You could say this is the one that came out after that 2013 year, a lot of people thought that they might just go back to Maximum Destruction, but they didn't. They brought out an entire new look that was essentially the one that we just saw, but added the scratches on it, and it had its own feel to it, its own look to it, and this is what stayed through pretty much 2019, and it was such a cool look. Everybody agreed that this truck captured the essence of Max D. It was a new era, a new generation, and yes, I sung the high praises of the Maximum Destruction truck, but you also have to sing the high praises of this one, because this one is just a regular season body, but it looked so much cooler. Now, to go back to what I was saying with that other one, if you look at the, look at the fenders, those little wings that are over the fenders, those 
are the difference between this one and the one that was in the 2020s. They took those little wings off, which made it look a little bit softer of a truck, a little bit rounder. Not a huge difference, but with them on there, it looks so much better and brought it from, which, which is here at number four, down all the way into the mid-tens. So obviously there was something working with those wings on there and it gets itself to a pretty high spot. Now we get into our podium positions, and in, I guess you could call it the bronze spot. At number three, this is the Decade of Destruction Max-D that ran in the regular season throughout that year. This was a very unique body. It didn't run a ton, and we've never seen it since. But so cool and so much better than the Spikes, because what this did was it took Maximum Destruction and it combined it with Max D. It brought the two timelines of this truck and combined them into one before we even saw the second timeline. We didn't even know that the Spike Max D was going to be around, but this truck showed us the past and the future. It was so cool. This is what I'm talking about for an anniversary truck. This had a lot of thought put into it, and it's the kind of thing that I wanted to see in 2023, and they unfortunately didn't do. But that doesn't matter. We have this beauty of a truck sitting at the number three spot. In the two spot, and I know a lot of you probably had predictions for what number one was going to be. Well, now you know what it will be. But I'm sure a lot of you had this at number one, and this is one of my personal favorites. It's why it's at number two. It's the matte black Max D. I love this body so much. It's so simple. All it is is a matte black Max D body with a black face on it, the chrome spikes, the chrome around the name. I mean, it was so nice. It stood out. And I remember when I saw this truck for the first time at the World Finals in 2018 in that Encore, when they brought it out on the dump truck, no one knew that this thing was coming. Out of all the predictions you could have for a Max D special design, this one was probably at the bottom of your list, and it turned out to be one of the coolest ones ever. It barely ran, and that's what made it even more special. It only competed in two events ever, and it competed in the one encore, and that is it. And it takes the number two spot. But with that, it does mean that at the number one spot, the Candy Apple Red Max D, Neil Elliott's Max D, is number one. Pretty funny that it's not Tom Mensa's truck that gets number one. It's Max D, but it's Neil Elliott's personal Max D that gets this number one spot. I love the Candy Apple Red. I mean, they could have made this truck any color. They could have. It could have been anything. Could have been blue. It could have been yellow. Could have been orange. I think orange would have even made a lot more sense. I don't think anyone was predicting this particular color. Yeah, even if it was red. But there's a difference between red, like you're seeing in the stands there at Sam Boyd Stadium, and candy apple red. It was a perfect choice. It was executed brilliantly. And it popped so much. I don't think anyone can argue, even if you don't think it's the best Max D of all time, I don't think anyone can argue that it's one of the greatest, if not definitely in the top three for everybody. And I'm sure a lot of you watching this video agree that it is the greatest Max D of all time. So that'll wrap up the ranking of Max D bodies. Let me know in the comments, what was your favorite Max D ever? Where do you place all these trucks? And also let me know what you want to see me do videos on for the rankings in the future. I've got a list of things that I want to get to. And now that we've crossed off Max D, we can get into some of these more unique designs and trucks out there. And I'm excited to do that, but obviously I'm always open to suggestions. So with that, thank you all for watching and we'll see you all in the next one.